I've been trying to make more of an effort to actually have my Sims go on vacations because I feel like I don't use that feature all that much. And honestly, with this infant update coming out, we're probably not gonna have a lot of time for vacationing. So I'm kind of wanting to build like a beach house, vacation rental type of lot in Sulani. My goal with this one was just to make a really nice honeymoon sort of destination spot that my Sims couples could come and stay in after their wedding, maybe spend a few days at the beach. So when building it, I was thinking about like woohoo spots and like luxurious places to eat dinner and the sort of things you might want to have your sims do on a honeymoon. I don't really build on these beach lots all that often. It's definitely sort of a unique challenge to build a house that is over top of the water, so I don't really do it like every day. If anything, the idea of a thing like this in real life kind of scares me. I don't really have any interest in living anywhere near the beach, let alone on the beach. This probably stems from living in Florida. I'm a little bit scared of hurricanes, like this is just not the vibes, this seems dangerous. But luckily in the sims we don't have have any sort of extreme weather, so it's not a concern, like not even in the slightest. But back to the actual Sims build for a second. With this one, I was kind of trying to have a slightly modern look to this house, but also use a lot of wood accents and stuff like that. And I tried to do like some split leveling with it too, and have the different decks in the back be at different heights. I do that a lot on this style of build, and I think it looks kind of cool. I don't really know how practical it would be in real life to have like a sunken part further in the deeper water, but again, we don't need to worry about any sort of realism in the Sims, so I'll just do whatever. But you can see I use a lot of that sort of yellowy toned wood and also white accents everywhere. I really struggled with the windows and door situation on this house because I really wanted to use like a nice big glass door, but I felt like none of them really matched the style that I was going for, so I tried a lot of different options. It's hard because there's so many doors and windows that I want to use. Think like that Desert Luxe Kit door, that big open doorway basically. I feel like it's really nice for this kind of build because it kind of has that like indoor outdoor living kind of vibe. But the the problem is it's really wide and it doesn't have that many swatches. I actually ended up, oh my god, <laughs> there's a cat. I actually ended up making the house wider just to fit the door, but you'll probably see a lot of me struggling with door color schemes when I get to the front of the house in particular. I didn't even really know where I wanted to put it. I also had a kind of hard time with the floor plan because of the door situation. This house really isn't all that big. I'm sorry. The cat has just decided she's helping. There's just gonna be a tail back and forth probably, <laughs> but I didn't really know how to do the floor plan because this house house isn't very big. It ends up only being one bedroom, and in fact, it's not even like a true bedroom. It's more of like a lofted space upstairs. I only wanted to have two Sims sleeping here. I didn't think of this as being like a family vacation home. It's more like a couple's vacation home. So I wanted it to be really private and really fancy and luxurious. So it's just a one bedroom house. It's got two bathrooms. There's like a nice one with a huge tub upstairs, and then downstairs has a shower. I kind of picture the downstairs one as being like the bathroom you'd come into and like wash off after being at the beach. There's a lot of other like cute little amenities that I tried to add in. Like on this house, there's a huge outdoor kitchen. We have like a bar and a grill and it has this cool cover on it. There's also like a hot tub outside. I've got like a little private beach area with some towels laid down. We obviously have lounge chairs. There's a fire pit. Like I was just trying to think of ways that my Sims could hang out here. Although in reality, I don't really know how often I'd have my Sims actually use most of those things. Like I'm not really just gonna have them sit down in a couch underneath like an awning and then talk because that's kind of boring. This house kind of reminds me of Love Island. I wasn't trying to build a Love Island house, but it kind of has those sort of vibes, if I'm being honest. It, it sort of seems like a Love Island villa kind of thing, but just for two Sims instead of like 10 people on a reality show. I'm a little embarrassed to admit that I'm, I'm kind of a huge Love Island fan. I think that it's like infecting me. That's why I built this. <laughs> That's why it looks like this. I've got like Love Island vibes just channeling through my brain. And before you ask, yes, I have been watching this winter season. I, I don't want to talk about it. It's embarrassing. The, it's embarrassing. Um, but just know that yes, I have been watching. We're in the middle of that door struggle right now, by the way. I think I actually cut out a lot of like the struggles that I had floor plan wise and doorway wise because I built this on stream. It took me like three and a half hours. And when I sped up the footage, it was like half an hour long. And that's just too much, especially because it wasn't even like useful footage. It was just me like trying out seven different doors and then changing my mind and then putting them all back and then deleting them and putting them back again. It just, it was embarrassing. I was being way too indecisive. If you were there alive, for this. I'm sorry that you had to see me do that. I'm sorry that you had to like witness the, <laughs> the constant mind changing of this build. But we're reaching the point now where the main layout is kind of there. Like I've done all the windows. You can kind of see what I've done coming together. I had originally wanted the upstairs to be like completely lofted and have this cool like whole half open to the downstairs sort of vibe. But I just couldn't 
couldn't get it to work with the layout because I also wanted to have a nice big bathroom. I loved the idea of having like a big, big bathroom, like a very luxurious giant tub sort of thing. And there just wasn't any space for it because I've got so many windows everywhere. There's just windows and balconies on every side of this. And I don't really want to have like, you know, a balcony off of the bathroom. Although I guess it's not that unreasonable for like a honeymoon vacation house. You can kind of get away with some weird things in a space like that. The hot tub was kind of difficult for me too because I wanted to have the hot tub in the back be like off on its own little section. And if I'm being honest, I realized after I built this and posted it on the gallery that the hot tub does not function. At least it doesn't work for Woohoo. I don't think I realized that you needed to have more than one side of the hot tub be accessible for your Sims to Woohoo in it, but they wouldn't Woohoo in it. I have like just the one side in the front because I kind of put it off on like a, a little bump out in the- are you yelling at me? I know, I can't believe it doesn't work either. But you'll see towards the end, I put the hot tub like kind of off on its own little section of the deck and it doesn't function. So, um, that's my bad. <laughs> I think they can still get in it, they just won't woohoo in it, which is, that's the only reason I put it there, if I'm being honest. Like, if you're building a honeymoon house, you want more woohoo spots. There is a woohoo bush, at least. I did include one of those. This is the problem with Twitch chat. Like, you, you build this beautiful mansion of a honeymoon vacation house, and they're like, mm, I'd rather have my Sims woohoo in a bush outside. Like, but okay, that's fine. It, this is just how The Sims goes, isn't it? <laughs> this is just how Simmers are. Seeing those pictures on the wall reminds me. One of the other things that I kind of struggled with in this house was the decorations, because I felt like I was trying to use a lot of the windows almost as art, or at least the windows were wall art, because you look out that window and you have this view of this coral reef and like these mountains and the beach. So I didn't really want to leave big open wall space for paintings, because we have so many beautiful picturesque windows to look out of. But then the walls that I did have space for paintings on, I didn't really know which ones to use. I ended up sizing up that base game, like, tropical painting. I used that on one wall over the sofa. And then upstairs, I found these really cool debug pictures from Island Living. They're like photographs from diving, so there's like some really cool photos of a dolphin and like some fish and stuff, and so I used those above the stair landing as well. So if you see those and wonder like, what the heck is that? I've never seen that before. Those are just the debug pictures from Island Living. I think that they're like a collectible that you can get if you actually play with the pack, but if I'm being honest, I've never done it. I don't- I don't know what it, how you get them. I've just seen them before. Maybe I should make a more serious effort to like play through all those island living skills again and like all those little mini careers and the diving and stuff because I don't really think that I've done a lot of it, to be honest. I played here and had my sims live here a lot when the pack first came out, but I haven't had my sims live in Sulani in a while. If I'm being honest, I think it's because I just don't like the beach. It's not like Sulani's fault, it's the beach's fault. Like I'm just not a beach person, so I don't really have any desire for my sims to live on the beach. I think it's the same reason that I have to go out of my way to like get myself to have sims live in Oasis Springs. I did a whole legacy challenge, I still have it going, where my sims live in Oasis Springs on purpose, because otherwise I just never want to live in Oasis Springs. It's the sand. Who wants sand everywhere? I've got enough of that. I'm in Florida. I'm nowhere near the beach. I'm in central Florida. The ground is still all sand outside. Nobody wants sand. Sand is just, it's not the vibes, <laughs> so maybe that's why I never live here. I'm gonna be honest, I feel so distracted right now. This is not my finest speed build moment. My cat being here is really throwing me off. But anyway, we're actually decorating the kitchen now, and you can see I'm putting a little bit of clutter. This is one thing that I wasn't super sure about, because I feel like in a vacation home like this, yes, it would be decorated, and there would be, like, things in here, but it wouldn't be cluttered, necessarily, because it's not like anybody lives here. I'm not trying to make it look lived in. What I want it to look like is, like, fancy. <laughs> fancy and clean and nice. So I was thinking, like, what's necessary, what looks pretty, what can we add in along the those lines. I did some open shelving but put like a couple plates, a plant, and like some wine bottles on it, but I would normally put more little cluttery things and I just didn't think it was appropriate for this build. Although I guess, I mean like plates and some wine bottles are pretty cluttery, so maybe I'm just saying that. <laughs> it does look nice, and I don't think that it's super unrealistic. Like obviously in real life Airbnbs have stuff around. I just don't know like how much to put. Now the bedroom was very hard for me. I think it was just a color scheme thing, because I wanted to use one of the beds from Island Living, but they all were sort of of like, I don't know how to describe this. They're kind of bright, and brightly colored is good, but I also wanted it to be very calming and like peaceful and relaxed in here. And so yet again, um, everything is blue. <laughs> There's more of like a bluey green tint to this though, and it's sort of like a bluey green ocean color. I have an excuse because this house is on the water. It's got like wood, that's the color of sand, and it's got blue, that's the color of the water. So it's, it's beach themed, it's not a blue suburban, it's a beach house. If you missed the joke, 
it's because I make a lot of blue houses in The Sims. It's not my fault. It's just like all the good swatches are blue. I don't know how to avoid it. Everything's blue in this game. It's not my fault. It just is that way. But anyway, I try to decorate this kind of like a luxurious bedroom. We have some nice big canopy bed. There's a little bit of dresser storage. I put a couple chairs by the window. I think more importantly though, it's just very nice and calming in here. There's also a really nice little private balcony off the bedroom. You can see I use that like open door I was talking about earlier over here again. And then on that little balcony, I put some cute little chairs. There's like kind of two love seats and like a little fire pit in the middle. There's this item from City Living that isn't actually a fire pit. It's like a coffee table, but it has like fire in the middle. It doesn't function like a fire pit. Like your Sims can't use it to roast marshmallows or whatever, but it looks like a fire pit and it looks really fancy as well. So I use that over here. I also did that little trick where I used that Desert Lux kit awning to cover the outside a little bit too. There's a lot of really cool wooden accents like this around the place in this build. I tried to make it look like the columns were supporting it. And I realized that honestly, some of the wood colors actually kind of work well together. I was using a lot of snowy escape on this build, which is kind of surprising because you would think like this is a beach house. <laughs> you can't get much different than snowy escape, but the snowy escape windows and columns had a great wood color that matched really closely to the island living stuff, but also to that desert Lux kit stuff. I also used eco lifestyle windows for like the stair section and also the front door, which again, did not anticipate using, but somehow kind of work out here. So yeah, I kind of owe you an apology. This house is not a limited pack build. <laughs> I try and do like a real combination of base game builds and like base game and one pack sort of builds, but also builds like this where I just kind of use anything anywhere. Again, with the tail, I'm sorry. The cat is all over the place today. Now she's gone back here to sit behind me on her chair. Sometimes when I'm recording, I don't even notice that she's back there. It makes me wonder how many of you notice that there's just like a little ball <laughs> sitting on the chair behind me. And you can see I also have that little webcam right there next to it. That's because on my live streams, if she's sitting in that chair, I'll oftentimes put the cat cam on. So I'll have like my game up and then my mini face cam like it is here on this video and then her little camera up in the top left corner. So if you come by my Twitch streams, if the cat's hanging out, sometimes I just have like the cat being filmed and she's just sleeping there on the stream. This is live cat cam footage, by the way. This is what it looks like. But imagine if I had this and my face cam on the live stream. It's fun, right? It's kind of a highlight. If you want to watch my Twitch streams, my name is just Lil Simsy on there, same as here on YouTube. And I stream like every day on Twitch. I play The Sims pretty much every day on Twitch. And you know what? Now is a good time to follow because with like the new expansion pack and the baby update coming out, obviously I'm going to post videos here on YouTube, but I can stream for like three hours on Twitch and talk about this stuff. The YouTube videos are going to be like 30 minutes. So if you want some bonus content on all of the pack stuff and the update, you should probably go follow me. Actually, I'm allowed to tell you now that I can show you video content from early access on Monday. So just a couple more days until we can share footage of the pack and actually start talking about it. The first video that I'm going to post on the new pack is actually the video that I made where I showed off the behind the scenes of all the builds that I did for growing together. They actually asked me to build three builds for the pack. And so I got to film like behind the scenes footage of like super early days building those lots. So in the video, you'll see like what the world looked like before it was done and like all the items as they were first being added to the game. And I personally think it is very interesting. So stay tuned for that video. And then obviously that day on Twitch, I can go live and I can share some more footage. So I think I'm going to try and film like a bunch of overview content when I get early access and I'll just play three hours of it <laughs> and I can talk and answer questions and stuff. It's a lot easier to do that kind of thing and like answer your specific gameplay questions about early access when it's live because I can try to like get back to comments and like address the most common things in a video, but it's a lot easier to like really cover everything when you have way more time and like a live discussion going on. So all of that to say, please follow me on Twitch. I'll have my channel linked down below. But back to the build for a second here, we're just kind of putting on some last minute decor touches on the outside now, which is actually kind of the main thing. Like this back patio is kind of the main part of the house, right? So I have that cute little covered part with the kitchen. Obviously I added in a really nice little dining area. And then I had a really hard time with how to lay out this like downstairs part, this lower section of the deck. So I tried a lot of things. I wanted to have this really nice like covered part on top of the hot tub. I wanted to have like some lounge chairs where they could relax and like sunbathe and stuff. I also wanted to have a little couch, maybe a fire pit area, but it was just kind of a weird rectangle. So I struggled with how to fill it all in properly. You can see now what I was talking about with the hot tub too, how I put it there and then realized that they won't woohoo in it. So <laughs> that was less than ideal. I also put like a little ladder downstairs so they could swim in the water over here. I was trying to place that without move objects just to confirm that it would function properly. And even still, I feel like those ladders from Island Living kind of work weird. 
weird. Like, even though I know for sure it works and I've play tested it and stuff, sometimes it just kind of behaves weirdly. I don't know how many of you have had problems like that, but I find that Sims just kind of route weird on this lot. Honestly, on all of the beach lots, when there's like water involved, things just get kind of strange. I mean, I'm sure we've all seen Sims do like strange water things. Literally every time I've tried to have a wedding at the beach, I'll like make a beautiful wedding setup. I'll have the wedding arch like facing the water. So when I get my screenshots and the wedding photos, the Sims are like there in front of the ocean. Every single time, somebody swims past them during the ceremony. I'm just like trying to have my wedding and then Jeffrey Landgrab is like swimming by in the background. Seems, I don't know what it is. They don't know how to act when they're swimming. It is actually kind of funny. It makes for some kind of funny photos, but I like, seriously, it's the combination of the two. It's the water and the weddings. Those two things just seem to bring out the weirdest behaviors of the Sims. Do you know how many times I've been trying to have a wedding and then somebody just stands up right in front of the wedding arc? Not even behind it. I can excuse them swimming by in like a public beach, that's fine, you're allowed to do that. But if I've placed a wedding arch in my own backyard and then like somebody's cousin stands up and stands in the middle of the aisle during the ceremony, really? Really? Even post like wedding pack problems and post all those updates, it still happens. I literally just used this build for my Sims who just got married, of course at their wedding, cousins standing in front of the wedding arch. <laughs> but they had a nice time here at the beach, they went swimming, they made a sand castle, I grilled dinner outside, I didn't really think Think to use any of my drink trays or like tables or anything, but you could have. There's a lot of nice places to sit. The last thing I'm doing here is just adding in like a little fireplace section outside that kind of faces the water. I wanted to have a nice couch that you could sit at and like watch the sunset from. And then I ended up putting some little glass flooring pieces underneath it. So you can like see fish swimming underneath you. I don't know. I thought it was kind of pretty. This speed build has been all over the place, but the actual build portion is finally done. So I think now I want to pop back into the game and show you a quick tour of the finished build. So I built this house on this lot, the Pure Perfection one in Sulani. On my gallery it's called Honeymoon Beach House, so hopefully it's pretty easy to find if you want to download it. The house itself costs like 65,000 simoleons, so when your sim rents it, it costs like $650 a night, which is not cheap, but it's also not like that bad. You can find that if you went around like digging up collectibles, right? It's fine. And this is what the finished building looks like. I'm gonna be honest, I really love this front landscaping. Like these parts, these are little torches, so there's actually flames that come out of them. We have this cute little path. These are debug stones and your sim does walk on it just fine. We have some pretty flowers and bushes. Over here I kind of have that private beach I was talking about. So I put like a radio, there's a sunscreen and some books, just a couple towels for you to come lay out and hang out over here. I found that I didn't really have that many townies walking over this way when I was playing, which was kind of nice because it felt more private. The back is kind of the main thing though, so I'll show you all this first. This part is probably my favorite. We have this really nice little outdoor kitchen area. I hung up some fairy lights. We have like some outdoor planters. There's obviously a grill. We have this bar space. I also put even like some little drink trays and stuff. And I really like how I put this cool wooden thing on it. This item is from the Desert Luxe kit. And then I put these columns. These are from Snowy Escape. So it looks like a whole built-in piece together. We also have this little outdoor dining section. There's some big planters. Down here we have some lounge chairs. This is that cute little fireplace I was talking about. It's not really a fireplace, but kind of looks like one. And then in game, there's actually fire animation in here. So you can sit in these chairs and look out at the water. We've got a hot tub down this way that you can come sit in. And then when you actually come inside the house, your sim can walk up these stairs to get into the indoors. Over here, I put this little like two-seater dining table. I decided to put it kind of in the corner because I liked the idea of your sim sitting up against the window and having like a romantic dinner. We also have a huge kitchen. They've got two kitchens in this house, more than you could ever need for like a one-night vacation. We have a huge fancy kitchen. There's this nice little living space. I didn't put a TV or anything or any sort of computer items. I was more just thinking of your sims like spending time together and spending time outside than like tech stuff. Through these doors in this balcony we have a functional massage table so you can give your sims massages. We have this little downstairs bathroom. This one is kind of what I pictured being like pool or beach bath. I guess there isn't a pool here but I mean you've got all this so you can come in from outside and take a shower in here. And then up these little stairs which have this cool like two-story window. We have these little pictures I had mentioned. These are like underwater photo collectibles. We've got this nice bedroom. I put this little VIP bucket item. Um, this thing is a date reward, but it also has a flirty mood thing, so your sims can get flirty in here. They have another bathroom upstairs. There's two bathrooms in this house, which you probably don't need, but you have. This one's got a tub as well, and they have that private balcony I mentioned. This is that door that kind of looks open, and I made this really nice private balcony with some more fairy lights and some seating and stuff. Overall, I tried to add some like interesting features on the outside to make it look less like just one big white cube. 
which is kind of what it is. And I think it looks pretty. I really, really like this house. I think it's so beautiful from the outside. I feel like I should try and build more stuff in Sulani because this world is just amazing. There's another lot up by the volcano that I never build on. Maybe I'll try and build something up here next. But I think on that note, I'm gonna end this video right here. So I hope that you enjoyed the build. This is actually the last build video that I'm posting before the new expansion pack comes out. So we have a lot of exciting content to look forward to in just a few days. But again, thank you so much for watching. Have the best rest of your day and I'm gonna catch you all tomorrow. Okay, bye everybody. My cat is currently sleeping with her paw over her eyes. Do you really hate the build that much? I know you're entitled to your opinion, Snap, but that's kind of rude. <laughs>